go for a drive in central Australia, there's a good chance that as your car whizzes past the trees on the side of the road, you find these things hanging in them. Great big clumps of stuff. And they're very interesting if you get out and take a closer look. But whatever you do, don't look too closely. Don't go touching them or pulling them apart. Because they're the home of the bag moth caterpillar, very aptly named. When I say it's the home, it's where the caterpillar spends its day. See, these are made in acacia trees or wattle trees, which is what the caterpillar eats. And there's a great clump of caterpillars living in that during the daytime. They come out at night and feed on the trees uh, that they're in. These little leaves down here are the, are the wattle tree leaves that they eat. And they go back into there during the day and they, uh, they shelter there. And if you go ripping them apart, particularly if you do, do it with your bare fingers, you'll find not only the droppings of the caterpillars, which are um, unpleasant enough, but they're cast off skins. And they are very, very irritating. If you get the hairs in your uh, skin, they'll make you itch for a very long time. The early woodcutters used to have a disease which was caused by this, and the Aborigines would never sleep under them because they thought they could uh, turn you blind. They certainly could give you very, very bad skin problems. Well, once the caterpillar's eaten enough leaves, it gets ready to pupate. It's a nice fat caterpillar, and it goes off to pupate. But it doesn't spin a cocoon up in the tree. Surprisingly, when it can spin that, it gets its act together and goes down and burrows into the ground. And the way it does it, its peculiar behaviour at that stage, is what gives it the other name of the processionary caterpillar. You see, Central Australia's a fairly hostile place, and there are not many suitable places to burrow. So the caterpillars go off in convoy or in a procession, and that's the name, the processionary caterpillar. You can see there the very long furry spines that can get into your skin and cause you so much trouble. But they set off like this in chains that are sometimes oh, almost a metre or more long and travel across the countryside like a great furry snake. Very well protected because anything that touches them is going to have to deal with that fur. For a long time nobody knew how they kept the contact up. It was thought that the ones behind pressed their noses against the tails of the ones in front. They now know that's not how it works. The leaders spin a very fine silken thread and the ones behind simply follow the thread. So for miles across the countryside sometimes you find these very, very fine silken threads as the caterpillars find a nesting site. Well, when they do, or I should say a pupating site, they burrow into the ground, spin a cocoon, and when the season's right, emerging will be the bag moths themselves. And they're the least distinguished part of the whole life cycle. A very small, yellowish moth, but it flies off to the acacia trees, lays the eggs, and the whole fascinating cycle starts again.